uh, a troublemaker himself, Chris Smalls from the American Labor Union. Uh, a man who really needs no introduction here. Uh, take, took on a giant, played a giant, it's amazing. Chris, do you want to come up here? All right, Chris. Yeah, so if you can just, you know, the floor is yours, talk about what you're doing in LA, the hot labor summer, the strike up in the Star, Star Garden, um, other things. And, and, and then we'll have a little Q&A and people can ask questions. Thank you, thank you. What's up, LA? What's going on, Los Angeles? <laughs> yeah, I mean, for those who don't know, my name is Chris Smalls, a former Amazon employee, founder of TCOEW, and also the current president of the Amazon Labor Union. The first union in American history for Amazon. <laughs> So I, yeah, as you mentioned, uh, I've been traveling the country uh, ever since we won pretty much the last uh, three to four months. Um, just spreading the, the good message and the good news and also inspiring um, the younger generation, the new face of, uh, of, of organizing and unions across the country on the importance of this uh, moment, the time that we're in right now as far as labor and the power that we have amongst people when we come together we can defeat uh, all the odds and any odds against us. Um, well, I think we've proven that with the ALU, with our campaign, uh, Amazon spending $4.3 million, uh, putting workers in over 3,300 captive audiences, um, getting myself arrested, getting other coworkers arrested, um, creating doubt, creating fear, uh, creating lies, trying to demonize organizers and people. Um, even through all of that, we were able to overcome all those odds. The one thing they can't calculate, and one thing we all have, is love. And one thing that they can't calculate is caring for one another. Because Amazon is made completely off of numbers and metrics. Everything they wanted has to be a quota or a rate. Everything is calculated by how much productivity a person can produce. You're nothing but a number to them. So how we were able to defeat them we're just showing our coworkers and our colleagues that we care for one another. That's what unions represent. That's why unions are, exist in this country. And we have to understand our value as workers. We're all a part of the working class and we all have a role to play in this revolution because it is a revolution. Let's talk about, can I curse? Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> get a little comfortable so yeah I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you guys know right now it's, it's a real war going on outside against us against organized labor tech companies are pouring billions of dollars into stopping us it's already working they're already winning unions in this country are less than 10 percent even with all the news and the Starbucks campaigns and Amazon campaigns and so on it doesn't matter because they're still outnumbering us. And the crazy thing about the whole situation is we outnumber them. So how do we make this movement grow? One thing for sure, we can't call it a movement unless we all come together. All the movements that we have in this country from social injustice, environmental, women's rights, gun laws, student debt, rent, homelessness, I can go on and on. Y'all know the issues. How much more are we going to take? And we got to think about what are we really voting for in 24? What do we have now? So we have to ask ourselves, what are we going to do when we leave here? We got to do something about it. So we're holding our labor. It's the best thing we can do say it again, we're holding our labor is the best thing we can do. Right. It's time. 2024 is around the corner and I can tell you now, everybody in this room is looking around like, who the hell, what the hell we voting for? I've been in the White House. What you see is what you get. It's a bunch of dinosaurs. We only have a select few people making the choices for all of us and it's time that they get out the way or else we're not going to have a point 
of return. We're already past that. We shouldn't be fighting for $15 an hour. We're fighting for 30 now. And more. Trust me. Job security, longer breaks, medical leave, uh, pensions, free college for yourself and your children, your family. That's all we're asking for. Uh, this is having a better quality of life. So it's important that we unionize every industry. Starbucks is doing it. I think uh, uh, Trader Joe's is up next. I already visited one store that unionized. You know, we got Google workers, we got Apple workers. I got a call. They trying to they trying to unionize the insurance company. Geico workers called me. I was like, oh shit, that's a good one. Um, we got to keep this going. Once again, this is a revolution, and we all a part of that. And I know the ALU. We did something historical. We broke a barrier down. We broke a wall down that was there for 28 years. Now it's time for everybody to storm the door. So we all got to stick together in this. See the all the way in or you're not. There is no in between. So don't let your emotions, don't let your infighting, don't let that get the best of you. You're going to take some losses. Gonna take some L's, trust me. Gonna get cursed out. Gonna have days when you're signing people up and nobody wants to talk to you. Gonna have days when there's one signature. And you're gonna have days where you're killing it. But every small victory matters. So we have to celebrate those moments because we don't get them often as organizers. Organizing is 24 seven. There's no days off, unfortunately. Yes, it's true. You know, you think about organizing. Your phone is like your best friend now. You gotta answer emails, you gotta answer calls, you gotta be on meetings. You gotta be two steps ahead of the boss. And you gotta prepare yourself for a long haul. It's a marathon, it's not a sprint. So understand, staying resilient, talking to your coworkers, several conversations, not just one. Don't even talk about organizing at first. The first thing you gotta do is befriend them. You gotta build a relationship, you gotta earn the trust. And then build off the commonality of the workplace issues. That's how we don't make it a left or a right thing like I told Lindsey Graham. We keep it a workers thing, right? Not a left or a right thing, it's a workers thing. We can build. We can build off a commonality of that. Everybody in here have grievances in their workplace. Everybody. They may not say it. So we have to show them as leaders. We gotta be warriors now. You gotta go in there, wear your union drip loud and proud. Be vocal with it. No more secrecy. Let the boss know that workers are speaking up and standing up and fighting back. Because when we fight back, when we fight back, we win. When we fight back, we win. When we fight back, we win. Every damn time. So remember that. You're not alone. Tonight we got some action over here, right here in your neighborhood. Strippers United. Shout out to them. Yes. Clap it up. These women been out there for over two months striking at Star Garden. Tonight they're having a hot labor summer game because I'm in town. So I'm inviting all of you to join me after here and stand on the picket line and turn customers away for them. They have a 10J to get one of the dancers back in the club. They have some big news that they, they're going to announce in about a week or two. They're really changing the game. I'm telling you now, after I went out there the other day, 
Um, they got a lot of attention. People been reaching out to me to connect them and the work that they're putting in is very similar to what the ALU did. Something they, they're they doing right now, there hasn't been a strip club unionized in this country since 1996. So yeah, right. So there you go. You guys have a chance to be a part of history. I think they go out there every Thursday and Friday, join them. They want strength in numbers to feel safe. They get harassed out there. So it's our community as well, and we gotta help them out and vice versa. Um, other campaigns, Starbucks. It's a lot of uh, buildings and baristas going on strike. Um, join them donate to their funds, get on their picket lines, whatever they need uh, to move forward in their campaign, that's gonna be very important. They're gonna hear about that in the news and we all have to stay in tune. Um, and last, of course, I'm excited to announce this, but uh, I've definitely connected with some Amazon workers over here that's ready to join the ALU. So I'll be back very soon, actually. And when you hear about these uh, campaigns at these buildings, um, please help us out. Join whatever uh, demonstration that's going to be put on. Um, donate to whatever funds we're going to have up for them. And just stay in tune. It's going to take the community to help beat them in these areas. I'm only one person. So I can't be over here, so I'm counting on everybody here to help these workers out. And I promise you, they will be victorious. So the same thing that happened in New York, from the East Coast to the West Coast. Bezos can't run for too much longer. He go to space, <laughs> all he want. We all know, because whatever goes up, must come down. And when he come down, his building is going to be unionized. Woo! Right. One of them was, uh, what is your end goal and how do you anticipate achieving these goals in light of the Democratic Party's reactionary platform? Oh, man, well, number two, I'm going to answer number two first. I don't give a damn about the Democratic Party. Woo! We, can't, we can't rely on elected officials, you know? It's, we're the ones that make them do their job, so. Um, that reverts back to question one. What am I going to do with the end game? There's no end game. Just organize. Every day I get up with the same energy I had on March 30th when they fired my black ass. So, you know, for me, um, the end game is getting a contract for these workers. The, the victory for the election is one thing, but to actually sign a contract, that's, that's going to be monumental. You know, for Amazon workers all across the world. Um, so that's the end game as far as that. But then, you know, the, this is a this is a lifetime battle that we're in. You know, unfortunately, and we all may have children. I have children. Um, shit is fucked up. You know, so I don't know what time or what expiration date that is. You know, they probably might take my ass out anyway. So it's up to everybody here to carry that that burden as well. So. No end game. We all in this until death do us. Thank you so much. Um, we've been trying to organize at my workplace for years now, and we're still going. Um, I was wondering what the best advice you have is for talking coworkers through their fears, fear of losing their job, and other fears that they have of repercussions from the employer. Yeah, I mean, like I said before, you know, it's not always about just talking to them about organizing. You gotta really befriend people. You have to really show them that you care for them before they start to, you know, open up their mind a little bit about, you know, the outside box. You know, we live in a box where we're sold this dream that if you work hard, you'll get everything you want. And unfortunately, that's been embedded into us since we were children. Because I, I can tell you now, if you told me I would be as cool as a rapper as a union organizer, I would have, I would have done this a long time ago. <laughs> but. We don't know that, you know, we, 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 we get into our careers and older 30s and we're like, damn, this is it? My boss is 20 years old. <laughs> no, it doesn't make sense. Something's wrong here. 
So we got to think outside the box. And sometimes that it takes two or three months. You know, it's just having that conversation when they're ready and being there when they're ready. You know, I, I stayed at the bus stop for over 300 days. You know, I, that wouldn't happen. We're talking about 8,300 people. They had to see me in order to, you know, in order to have those conversations. So just being there when they're ready and that time will come. There's gonna be a time when that manager could get on their ass and they're like, you know what, this is that you can talk about? <laughs> they gotta be there. Tell these unions they gotta be held accountable too. No more parading until we get some contracts, until we get some campaigns that are really worth celebrating. So take the streets on Labor Day, uh, prepare yourselves for a long holiday season and a cold labor winter. <laughs> because Black Friday, this holiday season, I'm gonna say this right now, it's gonna be a lot more people striking. Time. It's time. So get ready. Because this winter is going to be a real cold winter. And I know I can count on my comrades. So let's finish up this hot Labor Summer strong. Um, show up for Labor Day. Uh, show up for these workers that are um, leading these amazing campaigns. And absolutely organize your workplace. Don't quit your job organize it because if we don't get it we shut it down if we don't get it 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 shut it down one more time we don't get it shut it down if we don't get it shut it down to the people.